So let's go through now and configure some of the default settings that I would usually apply to a device that I'm about to hand over to my child. Uh, the first one is the daily limit, and that's set the amount of time that my training spends on their devices daily. Let's tick or click the setup, and here I don't want them to use it for any longer than one hour a day. That might be restrictive, but this is just for the purposes of an example. Um, you can, of course, set Saturday and Sundays as well uh, for an hour for all of that, uh, or we can set Saturday and Sunday and add a different schedule for Saturday to Sunday where they can use it for three hours. So here we've got one hour on Monday to Friday and three hours for Saturday to Sunday. Happy with that configuration? I'm going to tap done. Now the downtime is effectively the hours of use. So if we tap on set up downtime, Basically, between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m., the device will be locked and it will be unusable, which means then that is, a, that is a very clear delineation for your kids so that they know that at exactly 9 o'clock the phone is locked. So I like that. I prefer that. It's totally up to you if you want to enforce something like that with your kids. Um, let me, I'm going to click that anyway, as tap it as done, and you'll note because the time has already passed, the device will be locked automatically. Before I revert back to the phone to demonstrate some of this stuff, I'm going to step through all of the other settings that I would normally configure. Let's go and have a look at app limits. Um, even though we've set a day, daily limit, you might want to set a specific limit on, an, on a particular app. Imagine on a weekend they've got three hours of, of phone use. You might want to only give them 30 minutes of Facebook. So when that timer runs out, that is, the, that is how long they will be able to use that app for and that app only. The more restrictive you are with these apps, the more painful it can potentially be when you need to undo it. So at this point, we're going to leave that just as the example where we've got Facebook for 30 minutes. I'm going to come out of that. I'm going to go back in and just check it has saved that. No, it hasn't. No. Oh, yes, it has. Save that configuration, which is awesome. I don't have to click save or mess around with any of that sort of silliness. Tapping back now, so we've just had a very quick look at app limits, which is setting time limits and actually blocking specific apps. The next, which is the all-important content restrictions. So let's tap on that. It should show the the previous some of the previous configuration when we set up the account. If I tap on Google Chrome, here you can see it says try to block explicit sites. Now the weasel word there, of course, is try. It says no filter is perfect, but this should help hide sexually explicit sites. We'll see. Um, again, before we go back to the device to check that all these things are working, um, you, you'll note that there's ways of allow listing and approving other sites as well. Um, but for now, let's just keep that as the default, happy with those configurations. There's other things that we can change inside content restrictions for Google Play, YouTube and so on. Let's just have a look through those quickly. All of these settings will be familiar because this is exactly what we set up when we create, created the account. Let's have a look at Google Play. You can see require approval for everything. Apps and games is general, films is PG, TV is PG, books restrictions is on, which means blocking anything explicit, which is exactly what we configured. Happy with those configurations. That's all set up here. Um, I'm going to come back out of the content restrictions now. And just having a look at the last one here, which is devices. There's a few handy things in here that we can configure. Obviously, there's, a d there's different devices depending on what you've logged into uh, the account with. But let's just tap on the Galaxy S10. Here, I can unlock the device. So, for example, if they need to get into something quickly during the night or during the day or they've already run out of time, you can unlock it for them. If they lose it, you can ring it. I can just tap that and the phone should ring at some point. There it is beeping. There we go. It's beeping until I press a button on the phone. You can, of course, see screen times and that sort of stuff. Lots of other configuration settings here around lock, sc lock screens, app permissions, location sharing, all configurable for you and how you would like to configure that. As I said, as part of this video, it's really just showing you the basics of what we can configure uh, and the things that I would configure for my kids. Happy with those configurations? I think it's time to go and test it now and have a look at this in action. Let's go and do that now. So here we can see my phone, or my child's phone, I should say now. You can see it is here at the lock screen. I'm going to just swipe to unlock it. 
Uh, let me do that. Swipe to unlock. It's fine. And you'll find that when we try to unlock it, it will say downtime is on. So that's fine. That's exactly what we were expecting, which is good news. We know that that controller is working. Let's go now on the website under Family Link. Keep in mind there is an app for this as well on your phone, so you don't have to use the website. I'm just using that for the purposes of this demonstration. If I tap on Devices, tap the Galaxy S10, I'm going to tap Unlock. Very shortly you'll see this device unlocks. There we go, now we can get to the desktop. And at this point, I'm going to come back out of the Devices section. So now at this point, let's see if we can go to anything nefarious. Uh, I've handed it over to my daughter and or son. They go to open something like Google Chrome. And the first thing they try to do is go to turn on sync. Yep, that's fine. Happy with all that configuration. Let's go to www.xxx.com. There we go. So we can see that blocking is already happening on the device. Ask your parent for permission to visit this site. Uh, I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this demonstration. So if we go back to our administrator content restrictions, let's go back to Google Chrome. We can alternatively change this to only allow approved sites. Now that can get really awkward because you suddenly end up spending more of your time adding in each and every individual site that the app may need to get to, that your, end, that your child may need to get to, and it can become more of an administrative nightmare. So for me, I really just keep it simple and just block explicit sites. Happy with that configuration for now. Let's just have a quick look at the workflow of what happens if you do want or if your child gets to a site that legitimately they are trying to access but has been infected by the blocker. They can of course, of course tap the ask permission. If I tap that as a child, it will send me an email. So let's go to Gmail. Um, if I refresh, you can see my training wants you to approve a website. If I tap on that email, you can see it's that they've requested to get access to a nefarious website, but you can of course go and view this in the Chrome dashboard. I will tap that, we'll click on that, and here is the site that they've requested, and I can simply click allow or deny. Of course, I'm going to click deny for this one, but it just shows you the workflow and the power of this technology and how cool this Google stuff is, yeah. So the next thing I want to check is that app installations are blocked or at least require uh, permission so let's go to the Google Play Store let's go and find firstly something that they would want to install like reading eggs let's go and tap and install that and here you can see ask your parent they can ask a person or ask in a message tap ask in a message uh, you'll get a notification with your parents decision if your parents is okay and they tap okay we wait for that to happen so we've sent a request for a being able to install Reading X on the device. Uh, and it's not clear what happens when we do that here in the Family Link website. Um, it is clearer when you're using the app because you get an, an alert or a notification. But just so you know, to approve the app request, you go up to this little bell here, tap that bell, and here you can see uh, leading, uh, reading eggs has been requested to be installed. I'm going to tap review and then I'm going to tap approve request. And you can see now, if I bring down the thing, you can see it's automatically downloading the app and allowing it to install on the phone, which is super cool. And shortly, we've got reading eggs installed on the device. If you find that that is, well, that's annoying. Let's kill that off. If you find that that level of control is too restrictive, you can go back to content restrictions, Google Play. And here, under the require approval for, we can change this to something like paid content, in-app purchases only or never. So at this point, I think it's safer to do all content um, because you know you can be sure that they're not installing thousands of games and other 
nefarious things that might be embedded in those games that connect to phishing sites or requests for more information and stuff like that. Um, so at this point, I normally just select all content, but if you want to make life a bit easier for yourselves, you can just do it so it doesn't they're not able to rack up a huge bill uh, for apps that have paid content. So just know that that setting is also there. We can also ensure that they your child is unable to sign in with this account if they know the username and password to a, another device. You could simply do that here by the account settings, controls for signing in, and basically whatever device they go to, it will ask you every time that when they are trying to sign into an iPad, an iPhone, a browser, that can't be supervised. So the controls for signing in, it will prompt you to say, do you allow them to sign in? So that is another handy feature. Finally, let's just touch on one other useful feature that I have had to come across before. When we were out, the phone got locked, there was no internet, and there was no way for me to control the device. Um, I'll show you what happened. The device was locked. There was no internet available. There was no SIM card on the phone at the time. And here you can see downtime is on and my child was unable to access it. You can do what is called parent access. So here you can sign in with your Google account or in the Family Link website there is a parent access section. I could tap on that and it's going to give me a temporary code. I can tap on the phone on try another way and here I'm going to type the code 870911 and there I can log in to the device uh, and, and unlock it and do various things, whatever I need to do there. So it's just another way of, of getting access to the device if we need to unlock the device or remove their account. That's just another way of kind of getting into the, to the phone. So that's a lot to go through in this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's so important to be able to know what these things are for your devices before you hand them over to your kids. Know that the Family Link app here is available for Android and iPhone. Um, so as a parent, I can install the Family Link app, log in as this account, and, and I have all of these controls at my fingertips on my phone, wherever I am. So it's, uh, really, really awesome, really flexible and a hell of a good way to manage the devices that we're giving our kids. I hope this video has been helpful. Please leave any comments if you'd like to see any more uh, videos or devices or anything that you'd like to know further about uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.